Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and part two of my vintage G.I. Joe Sky Striker restoration. In part one you saw me take this Sky Striker and give it a really good clean because it was absolutely filthy and then we worked on repairing the broken tail fins. You can see here this is one of the broken tail fins where the clips are snapped off and uh, we made new clips so that this uh, could reattach to the back of the Sky Striker. But as you can see there's still more to do and actually since the last video I've been tracking down the last few missing pieces that I needed to uh, get the Sky Striker back up and running and we're going to get all of those put in place today and try and make this look as good as new. One of the things I do want to try and fix which I have no idea if I can fix is uh, this cockpit cover. Now this is the one that Omar Khan very kindly sent me with the Sky Striker and it's the one that came with this originally but as you can see the hinge has snapped off uh, and this looks like an incredibly weak spot. The sort of uh, again one of those sort of toy designs that it's just designed to break. Uh, I'm going to have a go at sort of gluing this back in place and see what we can do but uh, I don't hold out much hope for getting that fixed which is why I have picked up another one uh, which is unbroken. Now this uh, you probably saw in the last video, I can't remember if I had it uh, back then, I actually found this incredibly easily when I first got the Sky Strike. I did a quick search and managed to pick this up for £3. So they are out there uh, sort of really cheaply uh, but it would be nice if I could mend this. I'm certainly going to give it a good go. And then I also want to uh, cover the parachutes that should go with these ejector seats. There are two of these seats that clip into uh, the cockpit there and you're supposed to put on Ace the pilot or you can see he needs mending as well uh, and he can be ejected from the Sky Striker and then float down to the ground with a nice parachute and I want to uh, put some new parachutes on this to see if we can actually get it working so I think it'd be quite nice to uh, at least get that part of it going as well so we're, we'll get that fixed up but as you can see Ace does need a little bit of work himself he's in pieces I do have all the pieces I've just got to fix him take him apart and put new o-rings and stuff in but uh, we'll do that in a bit so we'll start with the uh, cockpit and see if uh, anything can be done to fix this I don't hold uh, much hope in getting this repaired but it's certainly worth a go. So here we have two different Sky Striker cockpits. This is the one that was sent to me by Omar and you can see uh, it's the back section that has snapped off. This is the hinge and to me this really is a part of a toy that's just been designed to fail. It's made out of incredibly thin bits of plastic and has all the pressure put onto it because this is the bit obviously where the cockpit hinges back and at some point a child can just sort of push the cockpit too far and it snaps off and I'm guessing that's what's happened here. If we look at uh, an unbroken one you can see yeah, it just looks like it's just going to break there's nothing really there of any strength and I can easily see why this snaps off. Now as I say I'm not really sure even if this can be fixed but it's worth a try. The plastic that this is made of has got a little bit of flex to it and I'm hoping actually some plastic weld will do the job uh, but uh, you know we've just got to sort of try it and see what happens. At some point this has been glued uh, so I've tried to scrape away as much of the glue as possible just using a knife. I'm guessing it was probably super glue that was used because it's really quite brittle glue and I've sort of chipped it away and try to uh, clean up these surfaces as best I can and you can just about see the uh, this sort of thin peg actually fits on quite nicely now the other bit mm, looks a little bit distorted so it may not work too well but it's worth a go so let's uh, let's try plastic world first if that doesn't work then I'm going to try some super glue with the uh, baking soda mixed in because that produces a very very sort of rigid bond and we might be able to sort of make something work with that and maybe even sort of a few little bits of sort of reinforcement of uh, plastic put on top of it just to sort of give it some extra strength but as I say at the moment I don't hold out much hope but it's certainly worth a try so let's try uh, plastic weld first. Now if you've watched my channel before you will have seen me use this plastic weld on a few different projects. It's really good stuff you can get it from most model shops and it sort of dissolves the top layer of plastic and uh, fuses the two surfaces back together and it's supposed to be as strong as it would have been originally. Uh, it does evaporate very quickly and it only works on certain plastic so uh, use a brush something like that to uh, get it onto the surface and only put a very small amount on it also marks a lot of plastic so you do have to be very careful with it. But the first thing I'm going to do is just try it on this. It may or may not work. So I want to put a little bit on this surface and just to see if it's actually going to start melting it. And I have a feeling that is. Let's just put a little bit on. Yeah, it is. Right, so we'll do both of these. I'm just going to get them a little bit soft. 
and then we'll start sticking it. I'm going to do one piece at a time because uh, it's going to be quite hard to control. Yeah, that does certainly feel like it's sticking. And it really does soften the plastic quite quickly, so you have to be very careful with it. Don't go too fast. Yeah, that is working. And also, once it's on, let it dry for a long time because it takes quite a while to evaporate. And the plastic actually stays softer for quite a long time. Let's just put a little bit more on that. Yeah, I think that is surprisingly working. So I'm now going to move around to the other piece and see if I can just put a little bit on there and start those surfaces melting a little bit as well. That does seem to be working quite well. I'm going to hold this and let it sort of set for a bit and then may do a little bit more uh, sort of of the plastic weld on it just to sort of soften some things and reshape some things but for the moment let's hold it at that. It's now been in about an hour and the plastic weld has had time to set and evaporate and we've ended up with a really nice strong bond on this internal a little post there that's really strong and actually not too bad a join on this bit here although a bit of plastic is missing you can see there's something that's sort of cracked out of the way so that's not quite as strong so I'm going to use another technique on that just to strengthen it and that's to use some super glue we'll drop a tiny amount of super glue onto that and then on top of that we will sprinkle some baking soda and that causes a reaction between the super glue and baking soda and you end up with a, a sort of material that goes absolutely rock solid and it will give it some extra strength. I think that should work pretty well on there. So let's try that. We're just going to get a little bit of super glue. Now I don't need to be particularly neat on this because it's quite uh, well hidden but I'll be as neat as I can. So I'm going to drop a little blob of super glue on that area like so, so you can see if I zoom in there that there is a little sort of blob of super glue on the crack and then I'm going to get a little bit of baking soda. Now you can just sprinkle this on, I'm not actually going to try it with a pair of tweezers. I don't want to spill too much and you just drop that on, actually I think tweezers is the wrong thing. I'm going to drop that onto the super glue and we should get a nice reaction And that will create what I'm hoping will be a very strong fix on that little broken bit. And this goes off almost instantly. It's quite an amazing uh, sort of effect. And once that's done, we can just shake off that stuff. And you should be able to see that we've now got a little blob that was super glue has turned into a solid little lump. And that does feel much stronger. So I'll let that go off a little bit longer just in case there's some bits that haven't dried. We can now test this in the Sky Striker. I'm not expecting this to be a sort of really strong bond as I've said but it should be good enough that we can display it and really all you need is these clips to hold in place so that the whole cockpit doesn't fall off because uh, without it it doesn't have any way of sort of holding itself in place. So let's just uh, clip these in. I'm going to clip this in quite carefully just to see that does work there. And then we can fold it down and clip that in at the front and that is nice and firmly held in place which is really what I was hoping for. Uh, as I say this is a very weak point and all you're going to have to do is sort of bend the cockpit too far back and it will snap off again and I think it would snap off no matter what you did to it but I'm pretty happy with how that has worked. The combination of plastic weld and uh, super glue with some baking soda in it has produced quite a firm fix and it's certainly good enough for display purposes. You can see that does lock in place very nicely. Uh, I think that's about as good as we're going to get for this. Uh, really at the time I think Hasbro should have designed that in a much better way. It's just uh, it's never going to be a strong point but for now that is as good as it's going to get. 
Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. The Ace figure that came with Omar's uh, Sky Striker is actually in very good condition. You can see he's not had a great deal of play. There's a little bit of yellowing going on and the O-ring has perished, which is incredibly normal for uh, these sorts of figures. I, I probably could do something with the uh, yellowing on the arms and the legs, but I'm actually going to leave it. I've, these days I tend to sort of just leave figures as they are, uh, just because I don't really, it doesn't really bother me that these are yellow. It just gives them a little bit of age. But if you want to, then uh, do check out some of my uh, de-yellowing videos and you'll see ways and means of uh, removing all of that. So really all this one needs is a new o-ring. I can see there's a bit of perished o-ring just stuck there in the hook for his legs and then the rest is really straightforward to do and I've shown many times before. Now I do have one other ace figure that uh, was sent in to me in a job lot of sort of broken and busted figures. This was donated by David Jordan uh, but the figure itself had had a lot of damage done to it. Someone had taken a lighter to it and melted the front of the body and the front of the helmet area and also melted the face off of ace so he was no good as a normal figure so I thought I'd do a quick little bit of customization on him. So let's take a look at what I did and I'll show you the final figure. And this is the end result. This is co-pilot Poloi. As you can see, I've given him a little bit of a toy Poloi look there. He's got my beard and my grey hair. Now, I didn't give him any glasses because I didn't think uh, that the uh, military would allow someone with such bad eyesight to fly in a plane, but uh, it's sort of close enough. As you can see, I've had to file away quite a lot of the front of the suit there because all of this had been melted and burnt. You can see, still see there's a few little burn marks on the front. I thought I'd give him a different paint application as well on his body, just so he looks slightly different to Ace. So we have have Ace there in the red and uh, what, what should we call him? Lieutenant Poloi uh, in the blue there. So I think that's uh, pretty good and that will look quite nice as a co-pilot. Uh, obviously as well you can see this is the helmet that should go on the top of uh, Ace. But if I fit this onto the one I've had to modify there's quite a big gap there so he's no longer going to be able to wear a helmet but that's fine. He will just look quite nice as the co-pilot in the back of the Sky Striker. With Ace and Lieutenant Ploy in the cockpit though it's starting to look a lot more finished and you can see actually it's quite nice having the difference in the two pilots and the difference in the jumpsuits there. I'm pretty happy with my little, simple little custom, looks very nice. Now these seats are also supposed to be ejector seats, you can pull them out here and on the back of them 
there used to be some parachutes that uh, would be wound around these two pegs with a string tied in that little hole there. But obviously those are long gone and I thought it'd be fun to uh, replace them. Now I was going to uh, make these parachutes because it's a very simple thing to do. It's just a big sheet of plastic, uh, sort of 30 to 40 centimetres across with a few strings attached and it was the same sort of plastic that you would uh, get on a plastic bag. So my plan was just to take a big plastic bag and cut a circle out of it. But uh, I was down at my local Tesco's and found that they had a whole aisle of party favours or party treats, the sort of cheap gifts that you would give uh, children at the end of birthday parties to take home and play with. And in that aisle, they had a whole bag of these, which are small little soldiers already attached to parachutes. And uh, you can buy four of these for three pounds. So I picked up these thinking that they would do the perfect job. The first thing I want to do is actually to test how good these parachutes were. So I had one of my nephews over recently, James, and we went out into the field and had a good go to see how well these parachutes worked. As you can see, these cheap parachutes actually work reasonably well. There's enough weight in this figure to uh, make the parachute open up and for it to sort of drift slowly down to the ground. Uh, you do have to throw them particularly hard to, to get them to any sort of reasonable height though, but that's always the problem with these sort of handheld parachutes. So what I've done now is I've actually attached one of these to uh, the chair, the ejector seat part of the Sky Striker. So we can now go outside and see how well it works with this. This figure is much the same weight, maybe slightly heavier than this plastic figure. So Hopefully the parachute will open quite well. I've put a couple of elastic bands around his waist that you can see here because I'm a little bit worried of him falling off the chair and me losing him in the field. So a couple of elastic bands should hold that on quite firmly and we can just give this a test. And you can see that did work very well. So uh, these parachutes certainly will fit these figures quite nicely. The only problem I can see with them is even folding them up as neat as I can. This is about as small as I can get the parachute. I've got one of the ones straight out of the box here. So this is one that I've not used. And this is how it sort of came, comes wrapped up from the factory. That is slightly smaller than I've managed to get it, but still pretty large. And it's gonna be a bit awkward to fit inside the cockpit. Uh, so I think I may have to come back to this at some point. Maybe I can find a nice sort of thinner material, maybe some thinner sort of plastic bag or something and make my own. Uh, this is a good sort of solution, but really it's just never going to fit inside this cockpit. Um, I don't actually uh, have an original one, so I've never been able to sort of see how well the original ones fitted inside the cockpit. This would fit just behind the pilot. You can see I can just sort of about squeeze that in and there is just about enough space there for the co-pilot to sit, but you wouldn't be able to fit another one behind him. There's no space behind this cockpit to sit anything more. So I think for the moment I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, they do work and it is quite good fun, but uh, they don't really fit inside the cockpit. So as I say, I might come back to that in future. The final task in this project is to put everything back together. So here we have the two panels that go on the top of the Sky Striker. And these just clip in place like so. There is definitely a left and a right side to these. We can then turn the ship over and we'll start putting all of the missiles back in place. Now there are six missiles for this ship. There's uh, these smaller ones, these slightly larger ones, and then the final sort of bomb looking missiles. Uh, it's taken me a little while to actually find these smaller missiles. These seem to be the hardest to find and also the easiest to break. I've found a couple where they've been snapped at this point here. In fact, this one looks like it's been snapped and someone has glued it back together. I've shown fixes 
pieces that uh, would work on this in other videos so for the moment I've not actually um, bothered to fix this one as the glue seems to be holding but I can see why this was break this is a very thin sort of area you've got a quite a lot of pressure can be applied on both ends of this and those little bits are just liable to snap so I'm going to be quite careful with these we will slot these just onto the little posts at the front there so as I say there's two of those we can slot them on and then we have these larger missiles that uh, sit on the sides here like so and the final two that drop here and here is the finished Sky Striker. As you can see, it looks uh, really quite nice now. I'm really pleased at how well and how clean this has sort of turned out in the end. It's nice to be able to fix things like the cockpit and the tail fins because those seem to be the most common areas that break on this vehicle. Uh, I've not uh, replaced the stickers on this because, as I said in the earlier video, they're actually in quite good condition. There's a few little sort of minor bits of wear and tear on them, but I don't like replacing stickers just for the sake of replacing them. And there are a few websites out there where you can buy replacement stickers from but as I have not tried any of them I can't give you a recommendation of which ones are the best so just do a google search and they will come up. I also really like the little custom Lieutenant Polloy figure that I was able to put in the cockpit there. It's nice to uh, sometimes do a little bit of custom like that and the figure was so busted and broken uh, I thought it's just a, a nice little addition there to have myself as the co-pilot to this Sky Striker. So again a massive thank you to Omar Khan who uh, very kindly donated this project to me. It has been great fun to work on I've really enjoyed working out new fixes for it. And I hope this video has been of interest to you, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.